there, folks. Rinium T here, and welcome back to oh, Let's Play Final Fantasy XIV Stormblood. In the last part, we wrapped up what we did, Eureka. Pyros. I wanted to say Pagos, but it was Pyros. And now it's time to do 4.5. However, first up, let's talk about Suzaku. And so it fell to you to call the raging army Tama of the legendary auspice in battle? Ah, Suzaku, the auspice whose fiery plumage was only eclipsed by her passion for her comrade's reason. Yes, yes, I feel a Tonka coming on. As the setting sun, the fire in my broken heart cast shadows on you. A thousand years of moments we shared in a fleeting dream. No matter the culture of the or the era, the tales of love and longing never cease to resonate with the soul, do they not? And in Suzaku's case, there's the added element of tragic irony of being misjudged by all save one singular man. A man she could have saved if only he was wrong in the world of right. A man whose fate she could have averted had she been the tremendous power she only later came to possess. As moving tale as it is, I would to know that every word of it is true. Hell's Cure Extreme is now accessible. Alright, and on that note, let's actually get to 4.5. Oi! Hold on, there's a recall of duty here. What? Oh, wait, what? Eager to listen to my harp, are you? For what higher praise could the mistrust and to have an audience the very hero who provides inspiration for his songs? Yeah, I have no fresh, comp fresh compositions I deem fit for a champion's ears. Would that I possess something more to amuse you? I've been struck by the most wonderful idea. You shall be the author and the subject of your own creations. Yes, by weaving an epic with your own endeavors, you will find yourself casting a critical eye upon past deeds. Think of such works as muses for future growth. Oh, I think I know what this is actually. There's no difficult thing to pen a poem. The words will come of their own accord, I assure you. Simply envision the scene and describe the memories in faithful detail. I'm in not an ad not. The truth shall remain resigned the finished piece I should then start to bring the past to vivid life in your mind's eye. And when you look back upon events with undistracted clarity, what was hidden in chaos may now seem blindingly clear, especially when things are in color by the uh, <clears throat> embellishments I might bring to the story. May the recording of your sagas record you with inspiration and insight. Oh, and do return some time and share what you have brought. So the recorder is unlocked. Ironically, we can't actually use it until, well, current content. <laughs> um, open the data recorder interface located under Duty in the main menu and view the help text for further details on how to use this feature. So yeah, ironically, we can't actually use it until, well, current content, which we are not at. So. <laughs> Yeah, um, I was like, wait, what? Really? This unlocks now? Soul Searching. I'm glad you've come, though I'm afraid there's little in the way of good news. After you left, we reached out to both the Alchemist's Guild and Stillglade Fane and attempted all manner of treatments. But the results were always the same. Whatever the answer is, it's not alchemy or conjury. Why did it have to be Yishtola and Urianger and not me? Out of all of us, they are the ones who could feasibly have solved this puzzle. And Elfano's still missing. God, it's all going wrong. Where do we even start? 
A grave situation indeed. Might I be of some assistance? Hey, Kryl, aren't you busy with Eureka? Kryl? I thought you were busy delving into the mysteries of Eureka. That's what I literally just said! When word reached me of the plight of our friends, I could not well stay away. As a fellow scion, not to mention your erstwhile mentor, this is one of those times you should feel free to call on me, regardless of my personal circumstances. I... yes, I should have thought of that. Thank you for coming, Kryle. We would welcome your insight. And I should be happy to provide it. Now, what's this I hear about Alphano heading into Imperial territory? That boy always did have some funny ideas. Do you remember the speech he gave when he was accepted to the studium? My life's goal is not less than the salvation of this star. <laughs> well, that particular grand pronouncement has been a source of great embarrassment to him, as you know. But the fact of the matter is, he meant every word and has lived his life accordingly. Yes, he remains altruistic to a fault, but I'm worried he was too fixated on his goals to see the dangers, as has happened before. You needn't be so concerned. Though his values remain the same, Alphano is not the blinkered boy he once was. Slowly but surely his eyes have been opened, thanks to a certain someone. A certain someone whom he'd be mortified to learn had heard about his little speech. Mum's the word, eh? Right, I'd better have a look at our patients. They're in the infirmary, I assume. I'll need absolute quiet, so it would be best if I did this alone. If you'll excuse me. All three are in fine physical health. At a glance, I would say they were merely sound asleep. Except for the fact that I couldn't sense the slightest trace of them in their bodies. It's as if their souls have taken leave of their physical forms. Ah, yes. The Elder Seed Seer made a similar observation. I've read the report. When you heard this mysterious voice, you described feeling as if you were somewhere else, yes? If we assume the ether which comprises your essence is being drawn to some other place, then it may be possible to follow the trail it leaves behind, just as we did in our search for Thancred. I wasn't around for that, but I can't imagine it was easy. Oh, it wasn't, but that's no reason not to try. I will have need of Master Matoya's crystal eye if I'm even to make the attempt. So, I suggest we pay her a visit. Overlook her eccentricities if she agrees to help us. Thank you.
come to disturb my peace again, have you? I hide myself away in a cave, and still you people insist on pestering me with your problems. I mistook you for young what's-his-name, but I see now you're the sister. Weren't you supposed to be the lively one? I've seen happier faces at a rain-sodden burial. Well, I'm sorry to dash your expectations, but the situation isn't exactly conducive to gaiety. Ha! <laughs> That's more like it. Stoller used to spit and hiss like a wildcat, too. Better for a young thing like you to be filled with fire and leave the doom and gloom to your elders. Now, what exactly does this tragic situation of yours have to do with me? If I may, Master Matoya, we have need of your crystal eye once more. Stola is one of the afflicted, is she? Very well. She may be an ungrateful stray, but she's my ungrateful stray, and I'll not see her buried before I am. Right, let us see what we can see. I'll begin from where our friends first fell, and cast my senses out from there. What is it? Did you find them? This, this, this doesn't make sense. How is it even possible? How is what possible? Kryle, what did you see? The, th the threads, they just... they just ended. And, and no, I didn't lose track of them. I followed them as far as they went. It's as if... It's as if they were cut off. Could the ether have dissipated if it had? Oh, oh, gods! Their bodies are just husks. It's like the broodmother's daughter all over again. No, no, th this is different. The Kalyana girl was already dead, body and soul, when Lakshmi affected her resurrection. Aye, let's not jump to conclusions. If their physical forms yet breathe, and show no signs of wasting, then it follows that their souls must still be intact somewhere. But where? That's the question, isn't it, girl? Death has not taken them to the ethereal sea, yet there are no tracks left for us to follow. We're no closer to an answer than when we started. But knowing their souls are still out there is progress of a sort. We just have to keep looking. Pray, excuse me a moment. Yes? I remember, but... What, to Alamigo? We're on our way. 
That was Lise. Apparently, a group of Popularis have defected to Alamigo, and Maxima, the envoy Alphano left with, is one of them. I'm sorry. I realize we've barely begun here, but... Go, child, go! You've made up your mind, and life's too short for dithering. I'll do some digging in the meantime, and see if there isn't some other method we could use to continue the search. Let's be off, then. Oh, not again. The enchantment barely seems to take these days. I'd chalk it up to old age, but I'd rather doubt it's that simple. Before they took ill, Yishtola and Orianger were sharing notes on a thinning of the ether. It seems to be happening all over. Does it now? And here I was, all set to blame my woes on that creaking mountain of refuse clogging up the Thaliac. I fear something has gone awry. Still, there's naught to be gained from starting at shadows. You can only do what can be done, and that but one thing at a time. I'm sorry to drag you halfway across the realm, but when Maxima mentioned Alphano, I thought you'd want to hear the news in person. Ah, we meet again. Though I was hoping our reunion would be under more auspicious circumstances. What happened to my brother? Where is Alphano? Never fear, my lady. Your brother was in fine health when I took my leave of him, and I have no reason to assume that has changed. You assume? If you will allow me, I shall endeavor to explain events. Our troubles began not long after we departed Doma. While crossing the burn, we were fired upon by the Emperor's personal guard and forced to make an emergency landing. As we stumbled from the wreckage, our attackers fell upon us again, and we would have perished there and then were it not for the intercession of a third party, a band of mercenaries whose leader claimed to pursue a vendetta against the Asians. This Shadow Hunter, as he styled himself, then escorted us out of the wastes to relative safety. Upon arriving back in civilization, 
I gathered my Popularis colleagues and prepared to flee the Empire. Master Alfino, however, declined the invitation to join us, preferring to continue his investigation into the Assian threat. Well, at least he's not lying in a heap in the burn. Tell us more about these Assian hunters. Who are they? And is Alphano still with them? He is. As to who they are, I'm afraid I have nothing to tell you. Beyond the fact that they root out and destroy Assians, they were unwilling to divulge anything which might serve to identify them. They would not even reveal their next destination. But Master Alphano asked to accompany them all the same. Since parting company with your brother, we've been engaged in a game of cat and mouse with the Emperor's guard. We made our way through province after province, finding the army busy restoring order wherever we went, until we finally arrived here in Alamigo. I can't thank Commander Aldin enough for giving us such an unexpectedly warm welcome. I'm not inclined to turn away refugees, no matter which land they call home. And if they can tell me how things lie in Garlemald, all the better. On that subject, there is much I would tell you. During the course of our journey, we heard tales that an entire rebel army had been slaughtered in the space of a single night. It would seem my former comrades grew tired of putting down uprisings in the conventional manner, and chose instead to bring a formidable new weapon to bear. Details were sparse, but the rumor alone was enough to dampen the flames of rebellion. I have also heard reports that several companies have withdrawn from their designated provinces and begun marching westward. It is my assessment that the Empire's forces are mobilizing for a large-scale military engagement. Westward? You mean they're getting ready to invade Alamigo? We knew this was coming, but not that it would be so soon. We've barely even begun to shore up our defenses. They won't stop an invading army. No, they won't. Dispatch messengers to the Alliance leadership requesting reinforcements, and send word to our officers in the field to hasten completion of those border fortifications. Prepare to meet the Imperials head on! No matter how quickly we act, we still want for time. When the enemy comes into view, our best recourse will be to open negotiations with their commander, and see that the ensuing proceedings take as long as possible. Would you and Alize head to Doma and let Lord Hien know about this? I'm sure he'll want to hear about Alphino too. Consider it done. We'll send word when... Untold sorrow must be changed. Ahead looms a calamity. Eon become instant. Throw wide the gates! Oh. You heard it too? Well, at least we're both still standing. Oh, thank the gods. I thought we'd lost you for a moment there. Why does this keep happening? I wish I knew. Nothing we've tried has brought us any closer to an answer. We'll keep working on it. But first, we need to go and see Lord Hien. Imperial invasion! I'm glad 
gladly talk to, uh, task us with visiting Lorkian. But it'd be dashing from place to place and sitting around doing over the things we can't change to the Enclave. Alright, to the Enclave. Greetings, my friends. I was just discussing future endeavors with the members of our newly formed alliance. The Kojin and the Confederacy you already know, and it was your own strength of arms that won us the cooperation of the Steppe Tribes. We have also been joined by our neighbors from Naxia and the indomitable citizens of Damascus, though the scattered nature of the latter's resistance will somewhat delay their official induction. These proud peoples have united under a single purpose, to stand against the tyranny of the Garlean Empire. Glad to see your alliance is coming together so swiftly. As things stand, I fear we shall soon have need of your strength. I thank you for bringing me news of Alphno. His fate is never far from my thoughts, and not only because he is our emissary. As for the sudden deployment of Imperial forces, I agree that Alamigo will be wise to shore up his borders with all haste. Every report we receive from our shinobi indicates a massing of troops in the western provinces. It seems always certain that the Empire is poised to bring its fist down upon Eorzea. And I would help to fuck that blow, but I cannot risk any reinforcements just yet. We will remain vulnerable to airborne assaults until our wall in the burn is in place. The all-important elegant energy barrier. The e energy barrier, yes. I thought they called it something more auspicious. A uh, name drawn from the Four Lords of Legend. Perhaps Sereus Aegis or some such? Well, just a thought. Ironworks engineers report that they have finished calibrating the generators and are ready to proceed with the, to the testing stage. Have you time to attend to the, fir final to the first test? You've seen the field which protected as a law firsthand. I would be interested to know here how you think ours compares. I will come too if you don't mind. Though I am no Ishtola, I may be able to offer some I insight. Of course, time being of the essence, it would be best if we made directly for the burn. Yugiri, I leave you and Hakura to bring the war council to a close. Understood. Your mounts are saddled and ready, my lord. We'll wear the storms. Choose an item, though. Serious wall. We will cross the burn by Yule and Falcon as before. Join me at the Overlook near the House of the Pierce. The person flying up there will help give me a marker. Do we have any hunter on here? Nope. Give me a marker, but I'm like, oh, but wait, what? Give the word when you're ready to take wing. Seems the engineers have matters well in hand. Should the barrier work as we intend, Dorma will be free to reinforce her allies in Alamigo without fear of weakening her own borders. Honored friends, the time has come to put your hard work to the test. Start the generator.
Node 1 is operational. Nodes 2 to 8 are reporting similar energy levels. The barrier is forming. One thousand yams, two thousand, three thousand. Expansion remains smooth. No fluctuations detected. Four thousand, five thousand. Target altitude reached. The barrier is holding steady at five thousand yams. We've done it. Ship. Of all the rotten timing. But this is a gift, Mistress Alizé. They can test our new wall for us. Seems solid enough. Though I was hoping for a fireball. Alpha, no. What are you? Let me go! He has my brother! Lower the barrier. Girl, the lad is not dead, merely locked in slumber. No, not him too. We could identify no cause and found no remedy. Thus I sought to return him to Doma, and into the arms of Lord Hian himself, it would seem. It is a day for fated reunions. Would you not agree, adventurer? Or should I address you as the Warrior of Light? Van Belsa, the Black Wolf. That was the title I was given, one I have long since relinquished. Stand down. The Legatus of the 14th Imperial Legion died in Castrum Meridianum. I am no more than Gaius Belsa, a man without rank or allegiance. Impossible. There's no way you could have survived. Do you remember how it unfolded? How I was deceived by Lahabrea? How I was convinced that reviving the Ultima weapon would allow me to bring peace to Eorzea? The Essian used me, as he used so many others, all to further the restoration of his wretched god. Yet even with the might of Alec at my command, you bested me. And as the Praetorium went up in flames, I was content to burn along with it. For a moment, at least. A moment of folly. 
To surrender my life thus would have been to betray all who died for my cause. It was for them that I dragged myself free of the rubble and swore vengeance on the Asians. The Black Wolf has shed his pelt, never to return to Garlemald or her legions. I live now only to exact revenge. My principal quarry was to be La Habrea, whom I gather you have since ushered unto oblivion. But so many more remain. Long as their kind lurked in the shadows, laboring to sow chaos throughout our world, I would see each and every one dragged into the light and put to the sword. Are the Scions not of like mind? In this single respect, perhaps. Then I shall continue the partnership the boy began, and share what intelligence I have acquired. Among the Asians, the black-masked ilk are subordinate to those who wear red. This you already know. Yet among the red there exists a hierarchy. Those set adrift with the shards clearly stand below those still joined to the source. Nabriales, who once dared to intrude upon the rising stones, belonged to the former group. And while he was indeed a dangerous foe, his powers were inconsequential next to the paragons of the source. The first was La Habrea, who plagues us no more. There is also the white-robed Elidibus, and the elusive Emmet Selk, about whom little is known. We have files on La Habrea and Elidibus. But I believe this Emmet Selk is new to us? As I assume my brother told you, we have evidence to suggest that an Asian now walks in the body of the Crown Prince. Have you identified this interloper? Elidibus seems the most likely culprit. As emissary, it is his role to maintain the equilibrium between darkness and light. Your many deeds in Heidelin's name have upset the balance, and I believe he seeks to restore it by throwing his considerable power behind the Empire. As a leader of the Asians, he is one of our primary targets. It was on the trail of this very prey that the boy and I came across the scene of a failed uprising. In the absence of a single Galian casualty, we inspected the bodies of the rebels, and the lack of any external injury drew my immediate attention. They had been slain by Black Rose, an alchemical invention of the Imperial Army. When I yet served as Legatus, I ordered its production halted, and all stockpiles destroyed. Toxic gas is not a tool of conquest, but of extermination. Toxic gas? This must be the new weapon Maxima warned us about. Something deadly enough to sweep away all resistance in a matter of hours. Gods. You don't think they're planning to use this in Alamigo, do you? Put your fears to rest. We infiltrated the production facility and destroyed all existing stores of the chemical along with the plant itself. Even should they rebuild the operation, they will not soon manufacture another batch. Regardless, I would draw your attention to a directive we discovered in the plant's records. The document was marked with a recent date, and authorized with the signature of one Zeno C. A. Galvis. A dead man signing the death warrant for thousands. Tis bad comedy. But the tale does not end there. Within that same facility was a chamber filled with devices of elegant design. Cloning technology, we realized. 
And what should we find in each and every incubator? But a young Emperor Solus. All of which prompts the question, were the Asians responsible for these abominations, or was it the will of the Emperor? I must know which hand guides the Empire. Though I have given up my rank, I am yet a son of Garlemald, and I will fight for the future of my homeland. It is time I return to the Hunting of Shadows. We should focus on our common foe. To reopen old quarrels now would serve no purpose. You saved my brother's life, so I'm willing to let sleeping dogs lie. But in truth, it's not my decision to make. There was a time when I scorned those who placed their faith in false gods, even as I, in my blinkered conviction, placed mine in Asian promises. Unlike yours, my strength of will and my restraint was found wanting. We shall meet again, warrior of light. So that was the infamous Black Wolf, an unexpected ally to say the least. Well, I am content to leave the fine tuning of the barrier to cleverer minds. Let us bid our friends from the Ironworks farewell and see what can be done for Alphano back in Dorma. safely ensconced in the private chamber. My finest healer is examining him as we speak. I have spoken with the physician. There are no outward signs of illness. Alphanel is lost in a sleep from which he cannot be awoken, just like the others. Seems that even the lands of the Empire were not far enough away to escape the cur that cursed voice. I share your frustration, Alize. I do. But Alphano has returned to us alive and otherwise unharmed. All that remains is to find the means to wake him. Until then, you can but fulfill your duties as a scion. Yours and your brother's both. You're right, of course. There are arrangements to be made, and little time to make them. It's a business then, my lord. <laughs> now that we know Ceres wall works as intended, can we expect reinforcements for Alamigo? You most certainly can. As promised, we will send troops to bolster our allies in the Orzea without delay. Pray be aware, however, that they will not arrive without delay. Save for some few who boast teleportation magics, the bulk of our force must be transported by sea. A lengthy voyage for which the smallest vessels favored by the Confederacy are ill-equipped. Accordingly, I mean to enlist the assistance of the East Alder Trading Company in finding suitable ships. As for navigating the distances in question, we are in we are in the happy position of being able to call upon those who plot the course of my people's exodus to Eorzea. Beyond the procurement of ships, I think it unlikely our East Alder friends will consent to any involvement in military operations, but I am certain they will afford Alphano a berth abroad aboard one of their vessels. Shall have a chirurgeon and Chirurgeon, accompany him every ilm of the way to the rising stones. You have my thanks, Lordian. 
Yuguri. I will go on ahead with our friends to Alamigo and list all those capable of teleportation and put them at the disposal of the, or disposal of the Erosian Alliance as soon as possible. It will form the vanguard. Yes, my lord. This is exactly what we'd hoped for, at least in the Alliance leaders. We'd be glad indeed to welcome the combined strength of the Yeast. Meanwhile, at the Black Rose Chemical Plant... Our supplies at Black Rose have been ruined, but the new plant is already under construction. We should have the first batch ready in time for the offensive, Your Radiance. See that you do. Yes, the infamous Black Crows. If I recall correctly, Gaius did not much care for the invention. A ruthless and indiscriminate weapon indeed, this airborne poison. It seems you are capable of making decisions worthy of your bloodline. With no gift for sorcery, we Garleans must look to Magitech to even the odds. If it spares the needless deaths of our soldiers and serves the cause of this empire, there is no method I would not employ. How very noble of you. Truly, though, I must commend you for embracing your role as Emperor. You play the part of the determined ruler well. Sometimes, even I catch myself believing. A silent agent of death. Now that I think on it, Black Rose may well possess the perfect aspect. Slowly but surely, the deluge of light has worked upon the ether here in the source, and the gas should be most susceptible to its influence. Well, I shall leave you to your own devices. Go forth and bloody the land with your grand and glorious war. While you do what? Precisely. Need you ask? I will be doing what all Asians do. I am well aware that your kind exists only to usher in the next calamity. But you seem oblivious to the harm your singular agenda causes to the Empire. You cannot have forgotten the events which followed your mortal demise. Our homeland was plunged into civil war for your failure to name a successor. The edifice you so carefully constructed was but a hair's breadth from collapse. Are you truly so naive? You thought me oblivious to the consequences of a departure so painstakingly timed? It was by design? Well, of course it was. Though I will admit the resulting panic exceeded even my wildest expectations. But how can you be surprised? Throwing the world into disarray was the very purpose for which this nation was, as you say, so carefully constructed.
Now, if you have no further questions, I must be on my way. Since we may not meet again in this lifetime, it would be remiss of me not to offer a word or two of gratitude. I really must thank you for this surplus of vessels. I can mold any host into my own image, but having bodies tailor-made for me in this fashion is so much less tiresome. You dabbled in elegant cloning techniques, yes? It certainly is a compelling, not to mention entertaining, field of research. And of all the options available, you chose the founding father on whom to experiment. You have a twisted streak to you, Varus. Like grandsire, like grandson, hey? If events play out as planned, this will become something of a family enterprise. You will be the capstone of this world, I the anchor and shard, and together we will give the lie to this star's fraudulent existence. links to me on social media so thank you again for watching and until next time this is Rindy MT signing out bye